So let's move back again. We'll start with our CVTs, our pull belt. Our pull belt, a la the belt on the front of your engine, your V-belt driving your fan or snowmobile, that type of thing. Certainly we've got our infinite selection of ratios. We've got our two pulleys. You've seen pulleys on the front of your car if you're taking the cover off your snowmobile. The pulleys can change effectively their ratio. And here on my CVT, I've got our pulley set. Right here are the sides of my pulley. Here's my belt. Okay, slightly different than your average snowmobile, but same basic idea. These pulleys, or the pulley halves, if you will, the sides move and it change the effective diameter of the pulley. This set and the set nestled back in here, there's a cutout over here you can take a look at, <coughs> excuse me, when you come up, change in a particular ratio, such that the belt stays under tension. Okay? And as such, when I change the ratio here, I have to make an attendant change here, and I effectively change the ratio of diameters between the two pulleys. If you're going to do this in front of your in-laws, practice ahead of time in front of the mirror. It's kind of hard to get that right. But that's what you're doing, and you're changing the ratio between these two points. Well, here's my engine. So here's input. Here's my output. When you come up and take a look at it, you'll be able to see the differential. Here's my final drive, my output to my front-wheel drive. So I'm changing the ratio between those two. And within the range of those pulleys, I had an infinite selection of ratios. These things self-balance. They don't self-control, but the control mechanism is non-divergent. They're, they're closed-loop connection. And here's our first example. What I've got, pull this example from a uh, cable car. Actually, not the, excuse me, trolley car. Not the cable cars like in San Francisco, but trolley cars. <clears throat> and here's my belt between these two, sitting right down in here, as we've seen. Just like in our example here, I've got my two pulley sides. Now, if you've read the transmission literature on CVTs, they call those variators. We'll come back to that term, but it's a variable pulley. Okay. And there's a second one right over here. And if we take a good look at this, this is a very, very simple design. I've got one half of the pulley that doesn't move and one half of the pulley that does move. And if the belt is a defined thickness, one unit wide, if I move those two pulleys apart, the belt will effectively move down. As the pulleys come apart, the belt being the same thickness has to slide down. If I push the pulleys closer together, the belt's going to have to move up, the diameter gets bigger, and the ratio changes. In the control mechanism form, see these two arms right here? This one and this one down here. Notice... The pivot point right here and right here for those two arms is equal distance from the two shafts. So as the two control arms do this, they pivot about a point equidistant between the pulleys. The amount that, in my case, if you will, I can't lay on the side, so I'll do it up in the air. The amount the top pulley pulls apart is the amount the bottom pulley comes together. So the two are controlled. That's what I meant about simple. They're almost self-controlling. I move one and I get the other for free type of thing. You still got to do control, and it's important control. And in this case, it was driven off. Let me pull off black and white picture, but a governor off the engine. As the speed changed, or as conditions changed, whatever they may be, our control input, I would tend to cause this to change. In this case, I simply had a, a ball screw, and as the speed sped up and this governor opened up, I would turn that ball screw, change the position of the arms, change the ratio. In this case, slow the speed of the input back down, not the output. I'm trying to accelerate the vehicle, let's say. I would keep the engine speed or slow the engine speed down, but I would continue to change the ratio, such as the vehicle, in this case our trolley car, kept speeding up. No different than your snowmobile. You ever pull the guard off and watch it, you'll see the pulleys change in unison, one getting bigger, one getting smaller, and the belt changing its relative position, as the snowmobile takes off, okay? And we all nicely accept snowmobiles as the right thing. But back to the comment back here, for those that run snowmobiles or if you run them hard on long flats, I live up in upstate New York, which means I can go out on, you know, some of the bays and lakes that freeze over up there. You know, and there's several miles long. You hit the gas and you accelerate. The tack comes up pretty close to a set point or thereabouts. And the snowmobile accelerates up through its speed range, okay? So we're used to it. 
again, if you're an outdoor sportsman type, you're used to the CVT. You put it in a car, it's a bit different deal. But that's how they work. 